Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to the next episode of our Minecraft modding tutorial series. In this episode, we're gonna be updating to the brand new Minecraft version that just came out, 1.16.1. And uh, this is a re-upload of a video I did a couple days ago. I'm re-uploading because I missed a few key steps that I think are very important to know. So if you did already update your mod, I recommend you still watch this video anyway. And yeah, so I just want to mention though that uh, you can follow along this tutorial series. If you're in 1.15, you can stay in 1.15. The process should be pretty much exactly the same except for a few key things here and there. Uh, so you can stay if you want, but I really recommend that you update. All right, so to get started, you want to go to your package explorer over here and you want to find your build.gradle. And once you find this file here with the little elephant icon, double click this to open it. And this file is what essentially downloads the dependencies and the mappings for Forge. So we need to change those two things in order to update. So what you want to do is come to the first link in the description and it'll take you to this paste bin here that I made. And I have two lines essentially of stuff that we need to copy and replace. So we can do the first line here, which is line 28, and we can copy it. And you want to navigate, as it says here, to line 28 in your build.gradle. So go to line 28, uh, right here, line 28. And it might be line 29 for you or 27. That's not really that big of a deal. Just replace the line that says mappings, channel, snapshot, version, this line essentially. So we're going to delete this, uh, delete it and we want to paste in the new one. And the new one should be 2020701 and then a dash and then 1.16.1. .1. All right, so the mappings are now updated. Now we need to go back to the paste bin and get the second line here. Copy the second line, copy, and we need to navigate to line 92 as it says here. So go to line number 92 in your build.gradle. Uh, and again, it, it might be 93 or 91 for you. Just replace this Minecraft uh, line right here. So delete and paste it in and you want to make sure that uh, basically we're replacing it with Forge 1.16.1. So if it says 1.16.1 there then it should be all good. Now all you have to do to make sure that these changes take into effect is come up to this little tiny uh, button that appeared in the top right corner. It should be a little elephant with a like uh, a circular arrow, a blue arrow circle. And if you click this button, this will rebuild the project with your build.gradle. And you'll see down here in the bottom corner, it does say building. Uh, and it only took a few seconds for me, but it might take a long time for you. It might take upwards of 10 minutes. So let that run. And when you're done, come back. Okay, so now we're officially running on Forge 1.16.1, but you will notice if you go to a class like, for example, Registry Handler, that there are some errors now. And that's because some of the code in 1.16 has been changed to be a little bit different than 1.15. So we're gonna run through a few of these changes so that you know what to do in the future and how to fix your code now. So first thing we should do, go to your Registry Handler class here, and uh, let's deal with these deferred register errors here. So in 1.16, a forge made deferred register a uh, private um, constructor so you can no longer instantiate a deferred register uh, object so now what you have to do is use a, a static create method so to do that we want to replace our new deferred register and triangle braces here with just deferred register deferred register dot create and that'll fix the error right there. So we can just copy this and paste it again. Remember to uh, replace the new deferred register and triangle braces with dot create. And in the future, when you create deferred registers now, instead of creating the object, remember you have to now call this static method dot create. So just remember that for future reference. Next thing we need to change is the hoe item here. So if you made a tool, a hoe tool, then you'll notice that uh, it needs to take in a new argument. So in the past, uh, hoe items only took in the attack speed and not the actual damage value. So you couldn't change a hoe's damage, but now you can do that uh, with any hoe item. So we need to add a comma here and in front of that comma, a new value, a new integer value, and I'm gonna put one here. And what this value is going to set, just like all the other uh, tools we have here, it's going to set the damage of the, uh, of the tool, how much damage it does. And if you remember from our tools video, uh, this is being added on top of our base damage and the vanilla damage. So I believe our base damage for the, this uh, Ruby tool type was like three, plus vanilla is four. So uh, if I actually, I want this hoe item to be a damage value of one. So I'm actually gonna put negative three here because that's gonna subtract from our base uh, um, mod item tier ruby base damage uh, for, of four to give us a, a value of one. 
So uh, not super important, but just remember that this value here is essentially gonna be uh, the damage value for your hoe item. All right, so now that's fixed. Next thing we can do is come up to our armor uh, package here and you wanna open up your mod armor material. Now inside of here, uh, you're going to get a little error up here because you need to implement a new method. So click on implement methods and we wanna implement this new method and it's not mapped yet, so it's not gonna have a like nice name for you. Uh, it's gonna be called function underscore blah, blah, blah. But essentially uh, what this is doing is um, accessing a knockback resistance value. So in 1.16, the new netherite armor adds a knockback resistance value. I believe it knock, uh, resists knockback by like half, it cuts it in half. So um, uh, now we need to actually add this as a value to all armor types. Um, and you can disable this if you want, so I'll go through that right now. But what you wanna do is first add a private final uh, floats named, um, let's just name it knockback resistance. Okay, so uh, we also need to add this into our constructor. So add a uh, float knockback resistance. And uh, we wanna, of course, uh, assign this variable. So this dot knockback resistance is equal to knockback resistance. Okay, all good. Uh, we need to make sure that our method here, our function method returns this dot knockback resistance uh, so it can actually access it. And then finally, uh, we need to add um, our knockback resistance to our, uh, our armor material type, our enum. So at the end of this final, um, uh, argument we passed into this parameter, you wanna add a comma and then add in a knockback resistance value. This value can be any anything really, I don't think there's any max. Uh, if you set it to zero, this will just disable knockback resistance from the armor set. This is what all like vanilla sets do except for netherite. So if you want your, your armor set to just be like a regular armor set with no knockback resistance, just set it to zero. Uh, that's what I would recommend. But if you want it to be like netherite armor where it has a little bit of knockback resistance, you can set it to one. Uh, it keeps going off screen, sorry. Uh, you can set it to one and uh, that will add a uh, be exactly like netherite armor. You could add it to like three if you really wanted to have no knockback resistance at all. Uh, so you can play around with that as you want, but I'm gonna set this to zero. And remember that now in the future, whenever you make a uh, eye armor material or a mod armor material enum here, uh, you are gonna have to now add a knockback resistance as well. So do this for all of your enums. And uh, we are done with this, uh, this class here. So the next thing we wanna change if you go to uh, your blocks class here, so let's just get rid of some of these uh, classes up here just so there's more space. Now, let's open up a Ruby block. So in Ruby block, there's a few things we have to change. Some of them are apparent right here and some of them we actually don't know about because they're not, uh, they haven't been methods in the past. So first thing we need to fix, if you have a block that uh, accesses this method dot light value to set the, uh, the light value of this block, so essentially make it a glowing block, this uh, method no longer exists in 1.16. So what you have to do instead now is actually use the method dot sets light level and you wanna pass in uh, a, um, a lambda statement for a to int function. And we can do that by essentially just doing value with a little arrow and then setting this to uh, whatever number was in your light value. So mine was 15, so I'm just gonna set this to 15. Um, and we can get rid of this dot light value function. All right, so the next one we need to set is a new method that you have to add to every single block class that you have. So do this for every single uh, class in your blocks package or any class that extends block. Uh, and you want to add the dot sets uh, requires tool method. Now, the reason we need to do this, this is a new method in 1.16. Uh, if you don't add this in 1.16, your blocks will actually be able to be harvested by fit, like the player's fist. It'll also completely ignore the harvest level uh, and act like it doesn't even exist. So if you want a harvest level here, if you want this to actually mean anything, you do have to add this, uh, this method to every single uh, block class that you have. So I'm gonna also add it to our Ruby or block that we set in uh, one of the previous videos um, right below here. So again, remember to set that in every single block class. Very important, unless of course you want your or to not require a tool and then you don't need it, but uh, that's very rare. I think that people would have that. So definitely add this method. 
All right, and now we are done updating all of the code to 1.16, so this will run perfectly now, and you can come up to the screen triangle and run the game, and I will see you in the game to test this out. Okay, so we're inside of the game and you can see that we are on the Forge beta here and we are on Minecraft 1.16.1 and if we open our mods button here, we can see that we do have our mod here, it is loaded and one thing I would encourage you to do is just jump into a world real quick, preferably a brand new generated world and just make sure in your creative inventory that uh, your custom tab is there and that all of your items are there. This just means that everything is working great and that we've successfully ported over our mod to 1.16. All right, so the last thing we can do is come over to our resources folder, go to your meta inf folder, open this up and open up your mods.toml. And what you can do is change your version number here from 1.15.2 to 1.16.1, the newest version. And this is purely cosmetic and it will show up when you click on that mods button. But other than that, this really isn't that important. So again, just a cosmetic thing. But now that we've set that, we are completely done porting our mod over to 1.16. So thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. And I'm really sorry about the re-upload, but hopefully this clears up any uh, of the things that I missed in the last time I re-uploaded it uh, or uploaded it for the first time. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.